thank you, Jerry, for that rehearsal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm honored to be here this evening. Excuse me, I have to do this. <laughs> to celebrate the 236th anniversary of the show. I know speakers before me, uh, before we ate dinner, mentioned uh, how it all came about, but I want to point out that when the Continental Congress made the resolution that two battalions of Marine he raised, they included the phrase, with particular care taken, that no persons be enlisted unless they were good seamen and able to serve to advantage by sea when required. That admonition, good and able, guides the Marine Corps to this day. Since then, those good and able men have served from the uh, armed conflict right up until today. Every armed, every armed war contract of the uh, contact that the United States has been in, the Marines have served in it. The Corps has survived at least two political attempts to eliminate it. And right now our Commandant is involved in convincing the Congress of our value again. We even survived Harry Truman's nickname for us as the police action boys during the Korean War. And I think we're going to survive this attack against us. I think Congress and our Commander-in-Chief will finally see the light. When I was asked to speak here tonight, I felt humbled because I knew there were many others of you who were better able to talk about the modern core and the Modern Corps' activity. And also, you local fellows here are more able to talk about the contributions of the new Detachment 1376. But then, I thought maybe Jerry has asked me to speak because he wants me up here as an example of an old Marine from the days when we used to wear cordovan shoes and green skivvies. <laughs> and you take a look at me, and it'll be a lesson that if you guys don't behave, you're going to end up looking like I am. Okay? So I accepted. I accepted as an opportunity to share with you something that's laying in my mind for quite a long time. What I want to share with you tonight is the abundance of heroes we have here in Pueblo. No, I'm not going to talk about the four well-known Medal of Honor winners, you're going to hear more about them this weekend. I don't want to denigrate their bravery and their contribution to the country, but I want to talk to you tonight about what I call the other heroes. I'm not going to tell you any war stories. If you want to hear some of the stories, you can Ask my wife, she's heard them all, and she tells me that they get more horrible every time I extend them. Uh, but during this little talk, I will introduce each of the great, the class of heroes that I want to talk about, with maybe a personal experience from my own uh, wartime life. Before I get to it, however, I want to tell you who I am. I'm a Marine. I've been a Marine for almost 70 years. I'm not an ex-Marine, and I'm not a former Marine. And our Commandant has formally just made this clear. And I hope that the newspapers and, and, the, and the other people in the press catch on. Once and always is not just a catchphrase. Okay, I flew in two wars, and I survived the most horrible campaign for which no medal is offered. That was a campaign as a second lieutenant for over five and a half years. I may hold the Marine officer's record for longevity at grade. <laughs> Being a second lieutenant is no easy job. 
the sergeants think you don't know anything, <laughs> and the skipper knows you don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know if there's any aviation marines in this uh, crowd. Uh, right. yeah. uh, okay, well I should explain that <laughs> squadron pilots are each given an ancillary duty, a department assignment, in addition to their being a flight, flight officer, material officer, operations officer, and so on and so on. When I hit my first squadron in the Pacific with my bright, shiny gold stars, <laughs> my skipper, who was a salty, intelligent major, in order to keep his squadron out of trouble, made me the photographic officer. And our squadron didn't have any gun cameras. <laughs> so I couldn't screw up. <laughs> and when I was recalled to Korea, I was still the junior officer in the squadron. And then after we pulled back from the reservoir, I was assigned to sail back with the squadron's material on an LST. When I got to Maeson, down at the south part of Korea, I unloaded the boat onto the only flat piece of ground I could find only to find out in person from General Chesty Puller that I had stacked all my crap on the division's observations plane's runway. <laughs> General Puller was never at a loss for appropriate words, but since we're in mixed company, I won't repeat the conversation. <laughs> but now that I've bored you with the high points of my career, I'll move on to uh, my subject, and that is the other heroes. Tonight I want to recognize some of the other heroes, as I refer to them, who got medals for their valor and many who didn't, but still they tore up their lives for the love of country. They took valuable years away from their families and they missed important years building their lifetime careers. And if you'll forgive me, I'll introduce each group of these heroes with a personal story. First I want to mention the medal recipients, Marines who did get some recognition of their combat work and the combat work in the face of the enemy. I'll introduce this group with a humorous story about the Purple Heart. One night in Korea, my plane got shot up, and I got a big gash in my arm, probably from a splinter of the canopy. When I got back. I mentioned to the skipper that maybe he should put me in for the heart. And he said, Dolber, second lieutenants don't get yeah. set purple hearts for scratches. <laughs> and I never got one. <laughs> but he chewed me out then because I had wrecked an aeroplane. <laughs> and you're beginning to see how my career is just a one series of being chewed out by senior officers. <laughs> but there was nothing funny about the stories behind the awards to four men whom I wish to spe specifically recognize. Theirs are tales of bravery in the face of the enemy. And if I've overlooked any, please forgive me because I'm new to this detachment and I don't know everybody. The first man I want to honor is Giovanni Gasparetti. Is he here? Okay, uh, anyway, Giovanni, at 17 years of age in June 1967, took over four years of his life from his life in Walsenburg, including a year in Vietnam, where he was awarded the Vietnam Gallantry Cross with Palm for bravery in combat. How about Carmen Atencio? He died here either, huh? He was a youth of 18 when he left Fort Garland and spent four years in the Corps from 1950 to 1954. Carmel is now 80, but I bet he remembers the wound he got in August of 52 in Korea. He had the Purple Heart in two campaigns in Korea. His DD-214 shows that he went to drill instructor school which probably endears him to all boot privates. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Manuel Armijo. Here's Manuel here. Please stand up, Manuel. <laughs> this 18-year-old rifleman, 
whose home was in Puebla when he enlisted in 1916.